What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the altar again, and this time we return with Josh of Pupil Slicer. It is great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for coming back on the show, man. Oh, awesome. Thank, yeah, thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, really nice to see you again. And Yeah, new, new album, new year, so um, yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, it's great. It feels like only yesterday I was talking to you guys before the release of Mirrors, but now I listen to Blossom, and uh, I got to tell you that uh, I have not seen an evolutionary jump between two albums like this. I'm very impressed with just how much you guys have evolved since then. This album is amazing. But for people who haven't heard the full album yet, do you feel that the first singles that we heard, No Temple and the title track of Blossom, is a good representation of this whole album? Or is that just scratching the surface of what's to come? Um, yeah, so I think basically uh, the first two singles are probably just a, a, a sort of snippet, really, of what we've got on the album, I think, personally. Um, I think some of the other tracks are going to be um, sort of full of lo a lot more surprises, a lot more sounds, that even if you've listened to Mirrors and sort of heard some of the other sounds we've explored across that album, um, you're going to be in for even more surprises, I think, because um, we wanted to drop, I think, the most left build song with Blossoms as the first single, but then we've got a, a few more surprises in there. So I don't think it's a representation of the um, album as a whole, but I think it's definitely got some elements that are going to be sprinkled across some of the other tracks. Yeah, well, uh, I was actually um, very impressed with how experimental this record was. Like, I thought Mirrors was like a very good like pedal to the metal and just kind of like in your face in a constant level. But this album moves in multiple directions. Was that sort of like a preconceived vision in a way, or was this like a very was the songwriting just as experimental as the songs turned out to be? Um, I think the sort of process with the songwriting was quite similar to the first album where we, some of it was just sort of purely Kate, Katie writing some of the songs as a starting point. Some of them came from jam sessions and some of them came from um, sort of getting it's me sending some clips over and as a jumping point from the drums. But I'd say most of all, um, the, the experimentation came on this album from the sort of synth work and electronic stuff. Um, and that's something that I know Kate's dabbled with quite a lot and we wanted to, we had like very small sprinkles of it on mirrors that um, our, the producer Ped helped us with um, last time. But then this time Kate sort of actually downloaded some sort of synth and electronic um, stuff and worked on loads of different layers um, for the songs, which I think yeah, even though you've got some of that classic sort of grindy, mathy sort of sound that I think people who've heard us before will be familiar with, I think um, some of the electronic sort of experimental stuff that's kind of been inspired a bit like by maybe like Code Orange or Nine Inch Nails um, across the album is going to hopefully pique people's interest a bit more and show that we've got a little bit more going on for us this time um, in the experimental department. I mean, conceptually speaking, was this kind of just like the sequel or picking up where you left off after Mirrors, or was this meant to signify like a brand new beginning for Pupil Slicer? Um, I think the first album, we it was more a collection of different songs wrote at different periods, but I think this one was a little bit more focused, and I think that was probably, you know, the first album we didn't expect to have an audience whatsoever, and now... We came into that one being like, oh, we've actually gonna, we know we're gonna have people listening to us. So we tried to make um, some of the songs a little bit more interesting um, from a uh, perspective of listenability. So there's a few more choruses and a few more things that come back a little bit more. But we always wanted to set this album out as everything just cranked up even more. So the sort of mafia bits are a lot mafia and then. You know the cat yeah as i said the catchy bits come back in a lot more and then um i think you know we only toyed with the kind of post metal sound in one song in the last album whereas in this album we've expanded that and really tried to make it part of our sound by putting it over like two or three different tracks so um i'd say this is definitely a representation of 
a lot more of a represent representation of where we want to be as a band in general than Mirrors was, even though, you know, Mirrors was wrote from a perspective of us wanting to write something really um, interesting and fun that we'd like to hear live. We've done that again, but we think it's more our sound and we're sort of finding that now. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, absolutely, because I, um, and when you kind of embrace that more melodic and post-metal sound for you as the drummer, have you been incorporating like more different types of techniques as well when you had to kind of move in different directions as well? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I've been listening to lots of different drummers to sort of get a little bit of inspiration and, as um, you know, Death Heaven's always been a band that me and Kate have really liked, so their, their drummer, Dan Tracy, I was listening to a lot of his work on some of their al earlier albums and sort of feels and interesting things he does on their sort of more, you know, black, black gazy, post metal -y sort of songs. Um, on the more technical stuff i've been you know uh mike mallion who recorded our first album i've been listening to a lot of his a lot of his stuff and how he makes you know something sound a little bit more complex and sort of interesting in more ba more well I say basic but more sort of traditionally timed um uh parts of parts of the songs and um I mean, Car Bomb as well, I've been listening to quite a lot when I've sort of been approaching the the uh, drums on the album. So, yeah, I mean, nothing too crazy, but um, there's always like two or three drummers I like to to, to listen to or or, listen, or try and get some inspiration from when I'm trying to write songs, especially to sort of new newer types of songs that we've not really put to the studio yet as well. Yeah. Well, a lot of people would say, I had this discussion with uh, Justin Foley of Killswitch, um, where like a lot of people uh, stupidly believe that like because drums don't have melody behind it, that it's a very it's not the most emotional form of instrumentation. But I with the men with the many different elements I see in Pupil Slicer, I could tell that there's a lot of emotion that's channeled into your rhythmic elements as well, right? I remember uh, the last time we spoke too, we went really in deep with the rhythmic elements of Pupil Slicer. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's, it's also just finding the right, the right drums for the right moments. I think, um, you know, some of the mid, the mid album songs that slow down a little bit, we've had to sort of approach the drums in a different way. And it was quite nice actually going into the, into a, a recording studio all together this time to sort of spend a month there. We we did come and go at different times, but. This was the first album we've done as opposed to Mirrors, which was um, done sort of segmented over different months and recording different parts at different times. We all went into the studio at the same time and Lewis, um, Lewis Johns, who, pardon me, produced the album, um, helped sort of drag back the drums in some places, which was, um, which was really helpful. And uh, I mean, you can play something over and over again and sort of get used to playing it in a certain way but then it's useful to have someone to say you know actually in this quieter bit you could bring the drums back down a little bit and let, let this bass line come through yeah like as you said the emotion of like the bass or the guitars or the vocals need to be elevated here so you have to bring things back down a little bit so um yeah I definitely agree with that i think you know the rhythm you know, as much as in mathcore and these sort of heavier kinds of bands, it, it, it is like balls to the walls a lot of the time, but knowing when to sort of pen things back and let the emotion of the track come through is definitely something, um, yeah, that needs to be thought about. I've, I, I normally don't get too deep into the genre debate thing, but the term mathcore, I've always been fascinated by only because like Car Bomb, which has been labeled as that, sounds very different from like a newer mathcore band such as the Callous Dow Boys, for example, and then Pupil Slicer. I mean, I see like, you know, the sort of mathcore elements that would define that, but I do see like post hardcore elements and even now with a lot of those post metal elements that you've uh, said. So what is like is there like a key element that makes a mathcore band a mathcore band is it a rhythmic essence behind it is it a riff driven essence how does a mathcore band really define its sound uh it's hard to say because if you think if you really want to get deep deeply into like you know 
the, the definition of genres, you, you kind of pin it back to like the early innovators, I guess, of the genre. And then, I mean, Dillinger Escape Plan, Botch, um, Converge to an extent, um, from the UK, maybe like Rolo to Massey. If you like put all of them bands next to each other, they're not that, you'd be able to pinpoint which songs and which band, and they definitely have their own their own sound, so to speak. But I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to really pin down what makes makes a band what they are. Like they just share, when they share just a few, you know, common, uh, yeah, things in common basically like you know odd rhythms and um you know hardcore elements and then a few metal elements um metal core elements it's, it's probably where you get that from but yeah i mean there's a lot of new, there's a lot of new bands at the moment who you'd kind of put into that category including us but then yeah i wouldn't use it as, as something to define us really at all because um there's just so many influences being pulled from different places like I'm you know I said earlier that you know Nine Inch Nails was a, 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 a band we were listening to quite a lot and you wouldn't even really put them near to the near to us in, in music but then you wouldn't put them near to um uh math core as a genre either but I guess that's what makes uh sort of music so interesting at the moment especially the metal scene because you just get a lot of bands who've grown up on the internet and aren't really pinned into one scene and they're getting their influences from different places. Yeah, that's something I've actually admired about the internet in a way because like, um, even though like scenes and genres have been so compartmentalized to an extent, I feel like uh, in the end, like what we see at like a show is just one of the many ways people have of discovering music. I feel like the internet in itself is its own diverse scene in a way. And like, you know, you have like bigger scenes, the way that people communicate on outlets and whatnot, but also like the way that people share music. It feels like, you know, obviously the internet has its fair share of disadvantages, but in the end it also has its great methods of really sharing music and kind of bringing different scenes into one. Yeah, I'd 100% agree with that. And yeah, as I was saying, it's that feels like why you know, in, especially in the metal scene, you just have such an like bands with such eclectic, eclectic um, influences, and um, yeah, just you can see them just pulling from all these different genres. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, when it comes to laying down your parts for drums, is it easier to sort of come up with ideas when you're in the company of Kate and Luke, or you know, isolation is such a great fuel for creativity? You prefer to sort of be alone in your own element when it comes to laying down your parts. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a mixed one, really. So some of the stuff I might just record some drums, and then guitar gets put to it. That's like just a very tiny element of it. Sometimes Kate sends me completely finished track with drums on it and then I'll make the tweaks to make it playable or change some bits to, to make the um make some of it a little bit more interesting or make sort of improvements and then I'll send it back to Kate and then Kate might send it back to me and then um yeah there's some instances that where we just are in a room together and just jamming and then we'll listen we'll get the audio recording of it and then we'll listen back and like pick little parts from it we really like um but yeah there was quite a funny moment um during like no temple where <laughs> i'd record we recorded like sort of a jam together and played this song like bits of it before we put it all together and then a few months later when we got to the point where we were going to record it i was like oh i think i need to change some of these drums kate like just getting all muddled up i was like i think i need to change some of these drums they're too hard to play and the cape was like i've got audio recording of you playing this from when we were like writing it so you should be able to do it i was like oh yeah that's right i mean just need to practice a bit more then but um yeah it, it comes from lots of different places but yeah i mean another another element actually of it as well is i some of the drum writing i do on the computer which for like some of the mafia bits is really handy so like if something's in like five four or six four or something and, and i'm sort of struggling a little bit on the kit to get the grasp of it i can get like a visual map of it all and kind of work out a little bit easier where hits are meant to go and stuff so 
yeah there's no there's no um blueprint really for how we do it it's just making things work and sound the best that we can and doing all these different methods to get the best song we can i mean like before recording we were changing stuff literally the week before which was probably a little bit annoying for our producer <laughs> when we got to studio like, oh we want to change this and you know we're not quite got it down yet but it's almost there but um it, i think it definitely shows in the album that we've put a lot of effort into all of the different elements and really try to you know improve the songwriting the best we can well um what you also mentioned too because some parts are written on the computer like i feel like that's something that's very fascinating about pupil slicer because you know you do kind of have like a bit of like the sort of traditional punk rock trio behind it there's definitely a real like organic punk rock aspect behind pupil slicer that you know where it's just a drummer vocalist uh, guitarist and bassist that you know all going full into it but then you also have the sort of like futuristic elements behind it as well i don't i mean maybe i'm just completely overthinking things right now but it almost seems like with pupil slicer that there's a lot of looking back in the past and also looking a lot towards the future as well yeah i'd say so i mean it's it, as i was saying it, yeah it's just that mix of you know i think something people really like about us is we are a free piece band and you know we just put on quite good shows i think and um have that sort of raw sort of metal sound but then you know we are trying to in get influences and sort of move with the times a bit and get these sort of electronic and sort of more interesting layers to our sound but um i remember i was speaking to someone outside one of our shows once and just came up to me and was like i've listened to you loads on the record i really enjoyed it but he's like i'm just surprised how like metal you guys are if that makes sense I was, like, what you, I was like what do you mean and he said oh you know like that felt like a proper sort of metal show with you know all the parts that sort of you know make you go crazy and um you know just had that you know proper sort of metal sound to it and yeah it made me sort of think a bit a bit about that so I do think we do have that traditional metal sound about us but then um i think yeah like a lot of some of our peers like you know callous dow boys i think you mentioned earlier we're trying to just put a little bit of a modern spin on it but then not shy away completely and you know wear our influences and be honest about our our, our influences and yeah wear them on our sleeve um and be speaking of influences because and i'm probably asking this question very prematurely right now but like being that I think with Blossom, it's again, there's so many different things that I discovered about Pupil Slicer and new, different sides of Pupil Slicer that have been exposed uh, that we haven't seen with Mirrors yet. Is it fair to say that with the making of this album, it opened up a lot more doors for how you'll all write songs in the future? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as, as I said, we, we, we don't have a blue, blue, blueprint um, to how we do things from a songwriting and how we approach the studio at all. I mean, we've learned a few lessons this time, doing it all with like a time constraint of, of a month um, to get everything recorded in a studio. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to know really. I think we always kind of had a little bit of a idea that even when Mirrors was sort of out, that we wanted to do this album in a very specific way, sound rise. Um, but we haven't really thought much beyond that, to be honest. I don't think there's a direct plan for what we're going to do in the third album, whether we'll, you know, harken back to some more grindy stuff or, you know, go in the direction of the more, you know, post metal stuff um, or some of the more left field tracks on the new album. So I guess we'll see, see what people think maybe and can go from there. And also we've got a month of touring starting uh, later this week with Boris so um, it'll be good to play some of the tracks in that tour and see what, how they go down live as well because I think at the end of the day we always want to we all we sort of started this band thinking we want to make music that's people going to enjoy in a live setting more than anything else so um, yeah we'll see how it goes from there definitely and the final question I wanted to ask you is, is, you know, every time I ask a band like how the making of an album was, 
and they tell me like, oh, we all mutually came together and it was all such, you know, like mutual part. Like, I don't really believe it when people tell me that it was all a mutually agreeance. If you're in a band with three to five people and you're writing a dozen or so songs, there's going to be some room for disagreement. There's going to be some different opinions flowing through. But do you, do you think maybe that actually can help the songwriting process? Is it better if maybe you, Luke and Kate are all kind of in your own little worlds when writing stuff? To, uh, together in order to you know add more variety and add more different elements or do you all kind of need to be on the same page when writing music together um it's a hard, it's such a hard one to balance really because i think everyone wants thinks their idea you know is, is the best sometimes and then you know it takes someone to you know show you sometimes that actually you know something might be a little bit better um we did butt heads quite a lot um, during this album, but you know, by the end of it, we were just so pleased with the record. Like all these sort of minor details didn't really um, matter too much, um, and sort of letting go of some things is is actually worth it sometimes. But it was, as, as I was saying earlier, we we had Lewis, um, who who's produced like so many good um, albums in the UK and you know further afield metal scene, so. Um, we trusted his opinion on a lot of things. Sometimes when we were like really torn between something, we'd sort of ask his advice and, you know, just trust his advice because he's just produced so many good records. But yeah, it can be really, it can be really difficult sometimes. Sometimes there's drum bits that me and Kate are sort of going back and forth about and we just completely disagree about some things and yeah, sort of have to argue our corner a little bit. But then, you know, I think it's it all comes from a place of care for the album and wanting it to be the best it can. Um, you know, same with our producer Lewis as well. I think he'd probably say the same. And yeah, you know, Luke's had some bits he's probably had to change or snip. You know, more more complex parts or bits that weren't quite working. But at the end of the day, we're all by the end of it, we're all good and always really happy with what we've come out with. So. Um, yeah, it'd be it'd be boring if it was all if it was all fun and, yeah. and like smiles. I think because I think to make you know an album you're truly proud of, you've got to you know test your test your friendships a little bit. Not not to like a, like you're going to fall out completely over it, but you know you've got to say some challenging things to people and you know really draw the best you can out of them because yeah, it's um it, not many people get get the opportunity to to you know have sort of an audience that are going to really care about an album so i think we kind of owe it to them to get the best we can out of ourselves for, for them yeah of course of course and i don't believe that there is such a thing as like a solo thing either like I, i'd imagine going solo has got to be even harder than being in a band with nine people just because you know you will constantly contradict yourself and you have no like uh right hand to sort of guide you yeah 100 percent um yeah, it's, it's it's good. Like I think I think we do work really well with each other, and you know, we even though it feels like we're probably quite a new band because we only sort of released our debut a couple of years ago. We were we have been sort of in this band with each other since like late twenty sixteen, early twenty seventeen. So um, yeah, we've been we've been doing really well, I think, and um, yeah, it's, it's good to sort of smell the roses sometimes and. And yeah, realize how, how how well we've sort of done, and you know how proud we should be in some respects to, you know, that we've got on so well and you know work so well collaboratively together. Yeah, definitely. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, is there just uh, anything else with Pupil Slicer with the release of Blossom that you'd like to promote in terms of uh, upcoming tours? You mentioned that there's a tour with Boris coming soon. Uh, what else could we be expecting uh, from Pupil Slicer uh, in the near future, if you're allowed to say, of course, and please tell me that coming to the U.S. is somewhat on the table. Uh, well, yeah, Boris Tours, first and foremost, we're really looking forward to that. We've got a few festival dates coming up, um, one in Poland, Mystic Fest, uh, Download in the U.K., which is going to be awesome, and then playing Arc Tangent again, a um, few things unannounced. Um, being honest, there's nothing completely in fruition for the US, but it's something we have been talking about and really, really want to do on this album cycle. So 
don't expect anything really soon, but we, we're working towards it the best we can. And, you know, it's that is the dream, really, to tour the US. So we hope we can do it sooner rather than later, but it is something we, we, we will do at some point. Better late than never as long as we just yeah. got, we definitely want to see you here. So, uh, but thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Pupil Slicer. Be sure to check out Blossom coming out this June. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.